Well, good morning, folks. Good morning. You're all very welcome to our service here this morning. And it's great to have the Reverend Philip Gallagher back with us. And Philip, we look forward to your ministry to us this morning. And indeed, also a word of welcome to those who are joining us online. We hope that you enjoy uh, your time of fellowship with us this morning. As usual, you're all more than welcome to stay behind for a cup of tea and coffee uh, in the hall afterwards. There's just a few announcements. Uh, just on Tuesday from 10 to 12, the Little Matter will meet as normal. And then mm -hmm. on Thursday at 8, the Prayer Union will meet in the hall. Also on Thursday evening at 8 o'clock, uh, it's our own church council meeting here, which will be upstairs. So that's for all the, the church council members. Just a wee reminder that that is on at 8 o'clock on Thursday evening. And then on Friday, the bowls will continue as normal. Then next Sunday morning, worship will be here as usual at 10.30. And communion will be part of our service next week. And the Reverend Ken Lindsay will be along to lead us in worship next Sunday. It's just a reminder from Deborah that anyone who is wishing to bring toys uh, for the Belfast City Mission, if you could please do that uh, over the next two Sundays, um, that would be greatly appreciated. So these are all the announcements. You may remember them in prayer. Thank you, Mark. Um, good morning, everyone. It's great to be here to, to worship our, our God and Saviour together. Let's stand and sing all praise to our redeeming Lord. Heaven. 
entered into your world to accomplish everlasting redemption for each and every one of us. You pay at the price we could not pay, that we can be free from our sins and live forever with God. We stand in awe of who you are this morning. We acknowledge that we have nothing and can do nothing apart from you, that in you is all we need, that, that with you in our lives nothing is impossible. In your holy presence we confess our sins. We confess judgmental thoughts against one another and, and those we interact with. We confess unkind words, unkind actions. Good words left unspoken, good actions left undone. Opportunities to share our faith with others not taken. We confess our sins to you knowing and assured that you died on the cross to pay for them in full. That in you we are forgiven, cleansed and renewed. That we are put back on our feet to go forth and serve you and shine for you, unhindered and unheld back by, by everything in our past. We thank you for the cleansing, renewing, redeeming hope of our gospel in which you are continually at work in our lives through all our feelings and, and setbacks to make us more like yourself. We thank you that we will be transformed and renewed because it does not depend on us. It depends only on you, your love for us, in which you will never let us go or give up on us. What a wonderful saviour we have. And Lord, this morning as a church family, we remember those of our number who are unwell. We ask for your healing hand to be upon them. Lord, for those who mourn, meet them with your eternal, overflowing, unending comfort. Lord, I thank you for everyone here, their gifts and graces, their heart to serve you and share your love in this world. Continue to guide us and and lead us as a church to shine for you and to make a difference for you in the communities you have placed us in. Lord, this morning, be exalted and lifted up through your worship. May all glory, praise and honour go to you. And now we join our prayers together in the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We now receive our offering for God's word.
the advancement of your kingdom and sharing of your love in this world. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>
tasted an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. You might like to stand for this. <coughs> service and did our, did our hearts great good and we, we look forward to the, the next time when you will play together whenever whenever that will, that will be. Uh, we turn now to God's Word. Uh, this morning we are reading from Isaiah chapter 9 uh, verses 1 to 7. Isaiah chapter 9 verses 1 to 7. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who are in distress. 
In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honour Galilee of the nations by way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light, and those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle, every garment ruled in blood, will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. We thank God for his word to us this morning. Let's pray before we look at this together. Lord, we thank you for your word that it is living, uh, true and powerful. And we ask that through it you would speak to us now and change our hearts back. In Jesus' name. Amen. Some of you may have seen the film The, the Founder. It's based on a true story about a milkshake maker salesman by the name of Roy Kroc. In the early 1950s, he got a huge order for his machines from a restaurant in San Bernardino, California, owned by two brothers, Richard and Morris MacDonald. Roy was blown away by their establishment. Customers were lined up all the way down the street, and within a minute of ordering their food, they had it in their hands. After the brother gave him a tour of the, the kitchen, he, he persuaded them to go into business with him by telling them that, that with his help, they could rule out their restaurant across the nation. The business today has over 37,000 restaurants worldwide, serves over 68 million customers every day. The film follows the story of how Roy Kroc wore the two brothers down leaving them in a position where they had no choice but to sell their share for $2.7 million. Toward the end of the movie, after the buyout is finalised, there's a scene in which Richard MacDonald is talking to Roy Kroc. The conversation between them is as follows. I just have to ask you one thing, Roy, that I never understood. That day we met you and, and gave you the tour. We showed you everything, the whole system, all our secrets. We were an open book, so why didn't you just steal it? Am I the only one who got to the kitchen tour, Roy asked? You must have invited lots of people back here. How many of them succeeded? Well, lots of people started restaurants. As big as McDonald's? Of course not. No one ever has and no one ever will. Because they all lack the one thing that makes McDonald's special. It's not just the system, Dick. It's the name. The glorious name, McDonald's. It can be anything you want to be. It's limitless. It's wide open. It sounds like America. Let's compare it to Croc. What a load of Croc. Who would eat at a place named Croc's? I like McDonald's as much as the next guy. But does it deliver on everything the name suggests? Has eating a Big Mac ever give you the sense that your potential is limitless and that you can be anything you ever want to be? This, child, this passage speaks of a child whose name suggests far more than the name McDonald's. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. 
Does an encounter with him deliver on everything his name entails? God's word to his people who were in great darkness and distress is that it does. As we look at this passage, we see the extent and the cause of the spiritual darkness God's people were in, and also God's answer to it. In verse 1 and 2, we are told that there will be no more gloom for those who are in distress. Those walking in darkness will do so no longer. The two tribes of Israel that Isaiah mentions here are Zebulun and Naphtali. In the Assyrian invasion that was about to swallow up the whole land, they were hit first and hardest. Once the king of Assyria had conquered these tribes, he, he settled uh, captives from all over his empire in that region. This resulted in a, in a mixed multitude of oppressed people who had no sense of hope in God or belonging to him. who were disowned and looked at with contempt by the rest of the people of Israel, even to the day of Jesus. What was it that kept these people in darkness and caused them to lose sight of who they were and what they had in God? What causes us to lose sight of who we are and what we have in God? In chapter 8 of Isaiah, we are told of two things that kept them in darkness, that can keep us in darkness as well. The first is living in fear of the world around us. The second is, is trusting in something other than God to deliver us. In chapter 8 verse 12, God warns Isaiah, Do not call conspiracy everything that this people calls conspiracy. Do not fear what they fear. Do not dread what they dread. The people were terrified of the changes happening. In the world around them. Every little rumble in the political and economic landscape, or even in the weather, led to wild speculation and panic. It led to them assuming the worst and being paralyzed by fear. Like them, we can live in fear of what's happening around us. Rumours about our place of employment, turbulence in the economy, a delayed phone call, a funny look someone gives us, aches, pains, any number of other things can, can lead to us assuming the worst and living in gloom. If my family is well and I have the means to provide for them, if I can manage my responsibilities and, and obligations by myself, and everyone smiles at me when I smile at them, then life is great and God is good. But if one of these things is out of balance, then everything is falling apart. This is not how we are supposed to live. Don't fix your eyes on changeable things outside of your control, which take peace from you as quickly as they give it. Instead, fix your eyes on your unchangeable, all-powerful God, who is in control of everything you'll ever face, whose peace no one can ever take from you. Not only was their darkness caused by them living in fear of the world around them, it was also caused by the, by the, the fact they trusted in false and temporary things to, to deliver them instead of trusting in God to do so. In verse 19 and 20 of chapter 8, Isaiah gives this warning. To his disciples. When they say to you, inquire of the, the mediums and spiritualists, don't listen. You inquire of God to the teaching and the testimony to his living word. Those who don't say this, who don't turn to God in, in times of difficulty to seek his way, they are in darkness. We live in a world in which many people turn to things like astrology and fortune tellers to, to find out what their future holds. Because they don't trust God enough to leave it with him. Others turn to manipulation, dishonesty and scheming. Because they believe that engineering what they want, when they want, is better for their life. The 
and letting God have his, his way with them in his time. This can only lead to darkness, gloom and insecurity. Because unlike God, we don't see around the corner. We don't know what will happen tomorrow and the next day. Thus, we are not able to work the events of our life together for our ultimate good. It's way beyond what, what we are capable of. Trust God. Wait on God. In the only place we can do so, which is the place of obedience to his word. When we do, we have nothing to fear. In his way for our lives, whatever twists and turns and, and peaks and troughs, it brings us through. There is nothing but his very best for us. As was the case with them, our darkness comes from us fearing things outside of our control. As opposed to fixing our eyes on the one for whom nothing is outside of his control. It comes from us trusting in our own cleverness and schemes to, to deliver us as opposed to trusting in God. If this morning you're stuck in darkness and gloom, fearful about what your future holds, having lost sight of your identity and insecurity as a child of God held eternally in his love, God says to you what he said to the Israelites. There will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. His answer to your darkness is this. To us a child is born. To us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful God. Our wonderful counselor, our mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The identity of this child is made clear to us in the New Testament. In chapter 4 of his Gospel, Matthew says this about the beginning of Jesus' ministry, which began in the territory of Naphtali and Zebulun by the Sea of Galilee. This took place so that what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. The land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, the way of the sea beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people dwelling in darkness have seen a great light. This Jesus, who was born in lowliness, and being found in human form, humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross, where he paid our debt. He rose in victory as wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. All the guidance, strength, assurance, forgiveness we need to overcome every obstacle in front of us is found in a relationship with Jesus Christ who came into our darkness and conquered it. Whatever you're facing right now, you need look nowhere else but him. When you tell Jesus about what's weighing you down, what's troubling you, you're telling someone who's personally experienced every affliction, sorrow, hurt, weakness and fear you have experienced and who's overcome it all in his death and resurrection. An encounter with Jesus Christ lives up to everything his name suggests. He meets you in your inability, failure and despair. As the one whose power and grace brings transformation, deliverance and peace into your circumstances, no matter how impossible they are. A few years ago, Jeremiah's Christmas present to his mummy was a three-pound dusting voucher which she could use any time. It was a wonderful, generous offer from a loving son. But there's a slight catch. His dusting service costs five pounds. <laughs> to avail of it, Susan would have to meet him halfway and pick up the, the remaining money. 
It's a spiritual darkness, gloom and despair we were born in could be removed with a feather duster. Then someone meeting us halfway would be an acceptable solution. But of course the stain of sin and the sting of death cannot be removed that easily. Deliverance from these things requires a divine saviour to come all the way to us. To die in our place and rise again is our victory over everything we face. Isaiah foretold that such a saviour would come. To us a child is born. To us a son is given. An encounter with him delivers on everything his name suggests. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Through him the guidance, strength, assurance and forgiveness of God abounds to you in its full measure as your way forward in every situation you're in. Receive the Saviour. He has come all the way to you, all the way in what you're facing right now. He will transform your distress into peace, your darkness into light. Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who were in distress. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honour Galilee of the nations by way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. The government will be upon his shoulders. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord <coughs> Almighty will accomplish this. Free and without price for each and every one of us to receive. We thank God for his word to us this morning. Amen. Yes. Our prayer group is going to lead us in our closing piece. For unto us a child is born, Emmanuel. He knows your hurt, he knows your name, and he's the very reason that he came. You're the very reason that he came. What a friend we have in Jesus.
at us this morning, that you have reminded us of who you are. Mighty Counselor, wonderful God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. We thank you that you meet us in the fullness of your name and everything your name suggests. And as we encounter you now, we, we discover that, that you are more than we could ever have imagined, that you are our sufficiency, that, that you are all that we could ever need or desire. Go with us and may the greatness of your name shine forth from us to everyone we meet. In Jesus' name. Amen.